Have you ever wanted to DJ using that awesome Spotify collection that you've been building up for years? Have you ever tried DJing and thought, I don't want to go and buy loads of music, I've already got it all on Spotify. Or have you ever thought, I want to have a go at DJing, but I don't even know the titles of a lot of the tunes I like, I just know the tunes I like. Well, if you answered yes to any of those questions, watch on, because I'm going to show you how to get started in DJing really easily using Spotify and just an iPad or an Android tablet. It means that you can get going really cheaply, probably with stuff you already own, and you can have a go at this without really needing very much at all to start. What you are going to need is a Bluetooth speaker. The one you used at your last party will be fine. Get that hooked up to your iPad and you're going to need a couple of things that you pay for, a Spotify premium subscription and a piece of software. Let's look at that piece of software now. It's called DJ Pro. You'll find it in your app store and it'll cost you about 20 bucks. Get it opened. It looks like this. It's a little bit scary the first time you see it, but don't worry. I'll show you exactly how to use it. It is nowhere near as difficult as it looks. So we need to get a track loaded and playing and that's actually simple. You click on the flashing icon at the top and you have to go and select Spotify by pressing the red circle with the musical notes in it and by pressing Spotify. You need to log in if you haven't logged in before. And once you've done that, you'll be presented with a screen that looks very similar to the Spotify that you know. Now, one of the great things about doing this is we can use their playlists to DJ with. There's the electronic music dance one, massive dance hits, great place to start. So if you're one of these people that knows what you like but don't know the titles of anything, look, this is your shortcut to getting something on the decks and getting started. So let's pick a track from this playlist and DJ Pro starts it playing. So now we're off and running. All that said, you could have done this in a normal Spotify playlist, right? So let's start looking at some of the DJ functions you've got, some of the extra stuff you've got to control the music that you just don't get on a normal Spotify app. So one of them is just a simple DJ style play pause. Sounds pretty cool, works really well. That's the way you're gonna stop and start your tracks in the mix. Another thing you've got on here, which you don't get on the normal Spotify app, is a crossfader, which lets you crossfade from one track to another. While you can set that to happen automatically in playlists on most streaming services, it chooses when it does it and it all sounds a bit lame. The crossfader lets you control it, it's much, much better. So let me show you how that works. Let's load another track up onto the other deck and let's crossfade from one to the other. So in order to load another track, you have to click the other flashing musical note button. But before we do that, let me just explain a change we're gonna to make to the software. When I loaded that first track, it started playing immediately, didn't it? We don't want that. We wanna choose when a track starts playing. So I'm gonna go into the settings and change in the general settings, the play immediately tick to be unticked. Now it'll play when we want it to play. So let's go back into the music library and pick another track. Let's pick, is it really love? This is now loaded onto our other deck, and we know it's loaded because the waveform is showing at the top, which is the whole track. On the first deck, the waveform is also the whole track, and the little red line is showing us how far through the track we are. And the other waveform, the vertical one, is a zoom in on the current section of the track. So, to fade from one track to another is as simple as grabbing the crossfader, moving it across, and pressing play on the new deck, like this. Congratulations, you've just done your first DJ mix. That's the kind of mix you hear on the radio all the time. It's a classic, it's been used for decades. And it's a lovely way of keeping the music flowing at a party. One of the brilliant things about it is you choose when the tracks change. Track not going down very well, mix it out. Track doing well, wait to the end and just hit play. It's up to you. As long as you remember to have the crossfader set to one, both or the other, you're not gonna go wrong. And it's not difficult. I promise you this wasn't gonna be difficult. Now let me show you another way of moving from track to track. Let's go back to the deck that we're not using. You can always check the deck you're not using by looking where the crossfader is. So I can safely stop the one we're not using and I can hit the load new track button and go find something else. Let's choose David Guetta, Your Love. It loads up and it sits there waiting for us and we can get ready to play it. So if I put the crossfader in the middle, that means both decks are live, and that means when I press play on the new deck, 
it will start playing and we'll be able to hear it in the speakers. So another way of moving from track to track is just to press the stop button. You remember when you stop the track, it sounds pretty cool like this. It sounds like someone stopped a piece of vinyl. And it's a really cool, simple way of moving from track to track as well. Maybe a bit more interesting than a fade. Uh, and certainly more interesting than just waiting for the track to end and pressing play on the other one. Although all three are perfectly good ways of mixing. So you now know three ways of getting from track to track. I want to show you a fourth and final way in this first part of this training that is a little bit more DJ-like and really pretty cool. It's quite tricky on these decks because they're not really decks, it's just a piece of glass. But nonetheless, it's worth persevering with. And it's called the spin back. That's when you grab the spinning piece of vinyl. Imagine this was a piece of vinyl. It's spinning round, isn't it, clockwise. You grab it and you throw it anti-clockwise and then you hit play on the other deck and then you turn off the one that you spun back. Let me get another track loaded to show you how that works. Let's go for maybe that one. Okay, so we have another track loaded now. I'm gonna spin back the one that's currently playing and press play on the new one and turn off the one that's currently playing quickly. Pretty cool, right? You don't want to do that too often or you'll start to annoy people, but just two or three times in your party set, that is a great thing to do to show that it's you in charge. What I want to show you now is a few extra things you can do to really start moving closer to how real DJs do this stuff. So let me talk to you about these because we haven't gone anywhere near the headphones yet. And of course, this is the DJ look, isn't it? What are DJs doing with their headphones? Why do they need them? Why do you need them? Should you bother? Well, yes, you should if you want to take this any further. I'll explain why now and I'll show you how to do it on this setup. So there's two reasons for using headphones as a DJ. Reason number one is to listen to the next track before the audience hears it. That gives you a chance to decide if you want to play it or not. The best bit about being a DJ is choosing the right track for the people in front of you right now consistently. That's what gives you the buzz. But the second reason, which also gives you a buzz, is being able to mix the track in skillfully. Again, being able to listen to it on the headphones before and during the mix, as well as what the audience is hearing, is essential in order to do that. For both those reasons, if you want to take it past what I've just shown you, you're going to need to get these plugged in. Luckily, with DJ Pro, it's as simple as investing in one of these. It's called a DJ splitter cable, and it cleverly splits the stereo output from here into two mono outputs, one of them that it sends to your headphones and one of them that it sends to your speakers. And it doesn't matter that you're in mono, trust me, although later on in your DJ in life, you will buy equipment that can do this more professionally. For now, one of these cables is awesome. Many a pro DJ carries one of these around and an iPad just in case. So don't be put off by it. It's a great way of getting started with this stuff. So the mono splitter cable, which you can buy by heading off into the app and going into the DJ accessories section and clicking Griffin DJ cable there, although any mono splitter cable on Amazon, for instance, will do the job just fine. The mono splitter cable is wired up with a wire heading off to your speaker. This speaker doesn't have an input for one of these. This one does, so I've switched over to a slightly bigger speaker. You might have your home cinema speakers, you might have your computer speakers, any speaker that's got an auxiliary input, and this wire is just heading around here into that speaker there. So this wire goes into there to your speakers, has the added advantage of making your beat mixing more accurate, by the way. So you're gonna to want to wire your speakers in at some point, you're gonna to wanna to avoid Bluetooth after a very short while. So you're gonna to need to do that anyway. The other split goes off to your headphones. And then we have to go into our software, and go to pre-curing at the top and turn it on, split output, plug in, and that's it. Our headphones are now ready to use. There is a headphones volume here at the top. There's a master output as well, leave that where it is. Headphones volume, put your headphones on when you're using them, that's where you're gonna adjust your headphones volume from. So how do we do it? Well, it's really simple. If I head back into the music library here, every single one of these tracks has got three dots next to it. And by clicking on the three dots, there is a little play button. I can press play on there, and I can hear that now in my headphones. Sounding good, but you can't. So meanwhile, 
Over here, you're listening to one of these tracks. We haven't got them turned on now, but I'm listening to something different in my headphones. And then when I think, yep, you know what? That is the right track to play next. Uh, I just click on it as normal and it'll load onto the decks. Second way of listening through your headphones is, let's, do, let's actually do it. So we'll hit play on this deck here. That track's playing away. Now this little button down here with the headphones on it, blue is on and gray is off. When it's set to blue, you'll hear that track through your headphones as well. So all you want to do is hit the headphones button on the deck that you're not playing to your audience, on the one the crossfader is not on, and you'll hear that through your headphones. And if you look at the headphones on here, quite cleverly, it automatically turns on the headphones on the deck you're not on, which is a nice little touch the software designers have put in. They know you're going to want, you're going to, want to be listening to the other deck. So that's enough for today. You've learned an awful lot about DJing here. We haven't shown you things like the tempo faders, the key selections, the sync button, all that stuff. That is absolutely fine because I want to give you something for free here. This book is called Rock the Dance Floor. I wrote it. It's a bestseller in the Amazon bookstore on how to DJ. In this book is a whole section on what all the stuff on this and other DJ software and hardware does. So go and get a copy of this book by subscribing to Digital DJ Tips for free. All you've got to do is click the button, subscribe, and then over in the My Profile area, you'll see a digital download, a PDF of this book that you can download and use immediately. And even better than that, there's an extra five bonus videos linked from the book that show you mixing techniques so that you can take this further there. So that has been our guide to DJing with Spotify and your iPad. I'm Phil from Digital DJ Tips. I hope to see you again very soon.